Long-haul low-cost is becoming a potential segment in the airline industry. Many airlines have been and are currently venturing into this segment. However, this segment is not easy to operate and has numerous challenges. It is not an exaggeration to say that this is the hardest problem of aviation. However, there is a tiny airline that can solve it in its way. Let's dive into the details in today's video to see what airlines have emerged victorious in this segment and how they have done it. So why is this approach challenging? Overview To start, let's discuss an overview of this segment. With the development of the middle class in society, the demand for long-haul travel has increased. They seek travel options to distant destinations at affordable prices, particularly for family trips. During the holiday season, this demand continues to rise steadily. Perhaps they want to save the money to spend on other vacation activities. A numerous of airlines tried to enter this segment. However, not many airlines succeed in this segment because it is challenging to operate if they do not meet all the requirements and overcome the challenges. Many airlines have to restructure and downsize because of mounting debt. The other airlines have to cut the long haul such as Air Asia X and Norwegian Air Shuttle. The challenges. First of all, the operating cost is high. Long haul flights always require higher costs than short haul flights. Furthermore, these costs include many factors such as fuel, maintenance, crew salaries, and airport fees. Fuel prices fluctuate continuously and typically account for about 20-30% of total costs. So maintaining low ticket prices while covering these costs is a huge challenge. Increasing fuel costs will lead airlines to consider raising fees for other services to compensate, such as raising ticket costs, other entertainment services, etc. This will continue to foster high competition with bigger airlines due to their greater resources. Consequently, low-cost carriers, or LCCs, may have to reduce flight routes, thereby reducing the overall breadth of their network. For example, Norwegian Air Shuttle had to restructure and downsize even selling the airplane and down the number of flight routes. AirAsia was in the same situation as Norwegian Air Shuttle when they had to find new investments and restructure debt. Secondly, the quality of service on long-haul low-cost flights is not very comfortable. On these flights, there is only one type of seat, the economy class seat. Low-cost carriers always eliminate business class and first class. The seats are thinner than those on traditional airlines. Please imagine having to sit in such cramped seats for a long period, from 7 to 12 hours. How would you feel? Moreover, other entertainment services, including Wi-Fi connection, are not free like on traditional flights. The rule regarding luggage is also stricter, and an extra fee will be charged if it is exceeded. For example, the seats on the Norwegian Air Shuttle are cramped, and the passengers charge extra for meals and entertainment. Similarly, on Scoot Airline, you have to pay for meals, blankets, and entertainment. To optimize operating costs, LCCs always focus only on basic services, cutting down on as many other services as possible. This results in a rather poor experience regarding the quality of long-haul, low-cost flights. Third, competition with traditional airlines is insignificant. In this regard, traditional airlines have several advantages over long-haul, low carriers. First, in terms of experience and service quality. Naturally, since low-cost carriers have to reduce most services to optimize operating costs, competing on service quality is challenging. While traditional airlines continue to enhance the quality... An important thing that makes the 787 attractive to the airlines and more powerful than ever before. That is its excellent performance. The long-range Boeing 787 lets the airlines open new straight routes and doesn't need to stop and supply more fuel. That helps save time and fuel. The efficient operational capability and fuel efficiency of the aircraft help airlines reduce operating costs and increase profitability. The performance increases progressively across the 787-8, 787-9, and 787-10 variants with their respective operating ranges also increasing. The range for the Dash 8 is 7,305 nautical miles, 13,530 kilometers. For the Dash 9, it is 7,565 nautical miles, 14,010 kilometers. And with the Dash 10, 
It is 6,330 nautical miles, 11,730 kilometers. Environmental friendliness. One more factor is that when building the 787, Boeing highly focused on, that is the ability of its environmental friendliness. The Dreamliner is designed and built with a sustainable product life in mind. It is built in Boeing, South Carolina at a net zero emissions manufacturing facility. The primarily composite structure, advanced aerodynamics and efficient engines enable it to have 25% lower fuel use and emissions than previous generation airplanes. At the end of the airplane service life, a portion of the materials used to build the 787 can be recycled. Boeing continues to research further recycling opportunities and composites. The important thing is the aircraft is equipped with the newest engine and composite material helps reduce carbon emission and noise, making it more friendly to the environment. Boeing status. To know how the 787 is powerful, please let me supply you the information about Boeing status. After that, you can see how it saved this manufacturer's life. Before we move on to the next part, please help us improve our channel further by checking if you've subscribed to stay updated with our latest information. Boeing's biggest problem is surely the consequence of 737 causing two big incidents in 2018 and 2019. In 2018, the incident with Boeing, 737 MAX 8 of Lion Air made 189 passengers dead. In 2019, the Ethiopian Airlines incident on this aircraft also took 157 passengers. The consequence was all 737 aircraft grounded and lost the reputation for the safety of Boeing's aircraft. Many people say that if it is Boeing's aircraft, they won't fly. This leads to a lot of crises behind. Boeing is facing big financial challenges and the problems of creation. Since 2021, this manufacturer has had many financial problems. The company reported a loss of $3.3 billion in the third quarter of 2022, compared to a loss of $132 million in 2021. Besides, they have to solve many internal problems to get their profit enhanced again. One more problem that needs to be solved is Boeing's stock price. It decreased by 29% compared with the previous year, which makes investors worry. However, Boeing doesn't forgive expectations about restoring their finance. In an event that was held for investors by Boeing, Boeing's CEO confirmed that they will bring a profit of $10 billion in cash every year since 2025 to improve the company's operation and offset the losses. This made investors hope that those strategies and others would help the company manage the debt of $57 billion. The reality is that the commercial aircraft business is highly competitive. The costs of manufacturing and certifying a new aircraft are substantial. While their Boeing 747 has been a great success, market dynamics have shifted. Boeing has decided not to develop new aircraft to replace the 767 and 757, potentially giving Airbus an advantage. Additionally, the company has acknowledged that the engines are not yet ready to support the development of a new aircraft, but they will improve versions of the 737 and 787. Boeing is delaying plans for a new aircraft until certain it can achieve it, prioritizing innovation over rushed production. They emphasize tackling carbon emissions and fuel use as pivotal challenges for the aviation sector. This made Boeing just focus on the 787 and other aircraft and transform the existence of it to overcome Boeing's advantages in this period, the recovery and development. In the social and economic context, along with changing market demands post-pandemic, the 787 Dreamliner has emerged stronger and continues to shine in the civil aviation world. Next. Let's discuss the recovery and development of this aircraft. In the fact that it defeats Airbus A380, the airlines are removing A380 from their fleets due to market demand that is unpopular with a huge aircraft like A380. They redirect a Dreamliner with more fuel efficient and reasonable seat arrangements. The airlines that own Dreamliner can be mentioned. All Nippon Airways with 83, including undelivered aircraft, Japan Airlines with 49, United Airlines with 64, American Airlines owns 44, Qatar Airways owns 41, etc., with a total of over 1,500 aircraft delivered. Moreover, the success of 787 helped improve the image and bring back the trust of passengers after the incident of the 737 MAX. This aircraft plays a crucial role in Boeing's development and recovery strategy, especially amidst an increasingly competitive aviation market. Conclusion 
Boeing has achieved great success with the 787 Dreamliner. However, that alone isn't enough to address their current challenges. What do you think Boeing should do next? Are you satisfied with the Dreamliner? Leave a comment below to let us know your thoughts. We love reading them. Also, please check if you haven't liked the video yet and subscribe to the channel. Thank you and have a wonderful day.